Welcome to the module on Microsoft Teams Authentication and Single Sign-On with Tabs and Bots. Hi, I'm Andrew Connell. I'm a Microsoft MVP in the area of Microsoft 365 development. I have a lot of experience with SharePoint development, Microsoft Graph, Microsoft Teams, developing add-ins for Microsoft Office, as well as developing applications for Microsoft Identity, including Azure Active Directory. This video is the first in a series of videos on this Microsoft Learning Module. This video is also part of a playlist that includes all the videos that are associated with this module so you can watch them in order. The playlist and all its included videos are associated with a Microsoft Learning Module that includes hands-on lab exercises and additional resources. Check the notes for this video and the associated playlist for more information and where to find the Microsoft Learning Module. Okay, let's get started. Developers can create Microsoft Teams app to create a new experience for their developers and integrate with existing business solutions. When custom applications need to access user information protected by an API and the data from other services, apps will need to establish a trusted connection with these different providers. So in this module, you're gonna learn about the different authentication flows supported by Microsoft Teams and how you can leverage single sign-on. Custom Microsoft Teams app that incorporate user data protected by Azure AD will need to implement an authentication process. Single sign-on, otherwise known as SSO, provides a seamless way for your Microsoft Teams apps to authenticate users. In this section, we're gonna learn about the different authentication options supported by Microsoft Teams and how the single sign-on works with custom tabs and bots. We're gonna focus specifically on authentication and authorization in Microsoft Teams apps, Microsoft Teams and single sign-on, and how to implement SSO in Microsoft Teams apps. In Microsoft Teams, there are two different authentication flows for the app. You can perform a traditional web-based authentication flow in a content page that's embedded in a tab, a configuration page, or a task module. If the app contains a conversational bot, use the OAuth prompt flow and optionally the Azure Bot Frameworks token service to authenticate a user as part of a conversation. You can require that your users be logged in with a Microsoft account or a work and school account. This task is called the user authentication because it enables the app to know who the user is. Your app can also get the user's consent to access their Microsoft Graph accessible data, such as their Microsoft 365 profile, OneDrive files, and SharePoint data, or to data in other external sources, such as Google, Facebook, LinkedIn, Salesforce, and GitHub. This task is called the app authorization because the app that's being authorized is not the user. You can use the web-based authentication flow for tabs and choose to use it when conversational bots or messaging extensions. Use the Microsoft Teams JavaScript client SDK in a web content page to enable authentication. And after enabling authentication, embed the content page in a tab, config a configuration page, or a task module. The Azure Bot Framework's OAuth prompt makes an authentication easier for apps using conversational bots. You're gonna use the Azure Bot Framework's token service to assist with token caching. Microsoft added support for single sign-on, otherwise known as SSO, to Microsoft Teams in 2020. This capability reduces how often a user is prompted to log in to a third-party service. Microsoft Teams SSO support is implemented in combination with code in your custom app and Azure AD. To support SSO, Microsoft Teams apps must have a corresponding Azure AD application registration. And this app registration defines what permissions the app supports and trusts the Microsoft Teams client applications to act on behalf of the user. Using this support for SSO, apps can request the user's profile information or information from Microsoft Graph. Users can consent Microsoft Teams apps for themselves to allow the app to obtain their profile information, and the app can then use this profile information provided by Azure AD and Microsoft Teams as the ID of the currently signed in user. Administrators can consent for an entire application via centralized deployment process so that each user does not have to individually go through the consent process. Now, Microsoft Teams SSO support, it supports both types of accounts uh, that are supported by Microsoft, which are both Microsoft accounts and work and school accounts. Now, Microsoft Teams SSO is supported in both custom tabs and custom bots. And the implementation and specifics of how it works, it's gonna be different between the two because tabs are rooted in a web experience with user interaction while bots are relatively service driven. Each of these two types of customizations that support SSO share common characteristics, specifically with the Azure AD application that is used to identify the user. So for a Microsoft Teams app to support SSO, you must do three things. 
you must register an Azure AD application, you must associate the Microsoft Teams app with the Azure AD application, and you must implement the code in the tab or bot to obtain an access token from Microsoft Teams. So let's take a look at all three of these things. The first step is to register an Azure AD application for the user. The developer tools provided by Microsoft include a process that will register the Azure AD application with all the required settings during your development process. Like most Azure AD applications, your app will need to authenticate with Azure AD using a client ID and either a client certificate or a secret. You'll also need to specify the redirect URL where, the Azure, where Azure AD should send the access token upon a successful authentication. The value for this URL will differ depending on if you're creating a tab or a bot. The Azure AD application used to support SSO and Microsoft Teams have many requirements. For example, they must be multi-tenant applications, they expose the access as user permission, and they also must trust all Microsoft Teams client applications calling the app. Creating and configuring this permission is done in the expose API section of the Azure AD application. Here you specify a unique URI app for the application in the format of API colon slash slash app host domain slash app ID. You then add the permission and optionally trust existing client apps to call this permission. When you automatically trust an existing client app, such as Microsoft Teams desktop, mobile, and web clients, Azure AD won't require the user to consent to the application to use this permission. To configure the Azure AD application to trust Microsoft Teams client, you're gonna add them as pre-authorized applications using their IDs and trust the access as user permission as you see here. Once the Azure AD application has been created, it must be associated with the Microsoft Teams app. And this is done in the app's manifest JSON file, and specifically the web application info section. There are two parts of this section that must be updated for your application. The ID is the client ID of the registered Azure AD application. The resource is the URL of the app, which is the same thing as the URI that was used when registering the app in Azure AD. The domain portion of the URI must also be listed in the valid domains array in the app's manifest. So for bots, the domain should be replaced with bot ID dash. You're then going to implement the code that requests an access token from Azure AD for the current user. In this case, your app typically provides this token to your own backend system that uses the token to store user preferences or other information specific to the currently signed in user. In this scenario, the token returned includes a few properties that can be useful for your application, such as the user's name, preferred username, their OID, which is the unique object ID of the user. This should be used to identify the user in your backend system as the name and the preferred username properties can be changed by the user or an administrator at later date. And then the TID is the tenant ID that the user belongs to. If you use the access token in your own API, you should implement the accepted best practices when forwarding the token that's received from Teams. This includes validating that the token to ensure that it was created by Azure AD, it's from the expected authority, the app is the intended audience of the token, and the token has not expired, as well as the token is scope is set to access as user. In the scenario where your app needs to access Microsoft Graph, your code can use this token provided by Microsoft Teams to your app to start the on behalf of flow, uh, OAuth2 flow. And when the token is used this way, it's referred to as the bootstrap token because it's only used to obtain an access token that can be used to call Microsoft Graph. 